Good afternoon, sir. Today I'm going to continue the report of Tina about democracy. And today we will talk about the historical progress of the political system in the Philippines back in the pre-Spanish to the 1980s. So during the pre-Spanish era, we have three concepts mentioned in the learning modules. The barangay, the council of elders, and the dato, which has the absolute monarchy. Long before the arrival of the Spanish, the ancient Filipinos lived in dispersed barangays under the control of many chieftains. The early Filipinos had a government which they called Balangay or Barangay, which is composed of 50 to 100 families, which often reside at coastal settlements. So most of the people relied on fishing for their livelihood. The head leader was called Datu or Raha. He has the chief executive lawyer, chief judge and military head, here in the Philippines, we have three branches of the government. The executive, the legislative, and judiciary. During the pre-Spanish era, the Dato exercises all of its power. We can say that our type of government back then was absolute monarchy, which means that authority to run or rule is in the hands of the Dato. Therefore, there is no limits on their power over state. He does not share power with other governing body. They believe in the divine right that is bestowed upon the Datu. Therefore, the monarch is claiming to have been chosen for their position by God. The pre-Spanish period is also consists of Council of Elders. They are also known as the advisors of the Datu. Their old members believed to have wisdom and knowledge of the barangay's customs, traditions, and cultural law. In the First Republic, we also have three concepts. The Malolos Constitution, male voters only, or the Ilustrados, Milio Aguinaldo, June 23, 1899. The Malolos Constitution is a short-lived republic established in the Philippines following the declaration of the independence back in 1898. It is the basic law of the independent Philippines. It is also the first constitutional republic in Asia. After many years of fighting for our freedom, Filipino revolution was successfully victorious and liberated the people for 333 years of Spanish rule. The Filipinos declared independence on June 12, 1898. By August, Filipinos had effectively controlled most of our country. General Emilio Aguinaldo ruled as the country's first president. He ruled by dictatorship until a democratic constitution was put to a place. The 1898 elections was killed in the Revolutionary Congress of the KKK or the Kataas-taasang Kagalang-galangang Katipudan ng mga anak ng bahay. They met in Malolos, Bulacan and first on their agenda was to write a democratic constitution for the independent Philippines. However, the constitution only lasted for two years. It ended up when Aguinaldo was captured at the end of 1901. The Malolos Republic was a cradle of hope as it is the evidence of the triumphant victory against three centuries of colonialism. It served as an inspiration for other countries to fight for their freedom as well. Next in line is the 1907 American period. There are also three concepts under this. Established Philippine Assembly, one fourth percent had voted. Males, landowners, can read and write using Spanish and English. The first ever Philippine Assembly elections happened in 1907. It is composed of 86 in the Philippine Assembly. It is also the first national elections for a legislative body in the Philippines. 
Now, let's talk about Ferdinand Marcos. Under him, there are four concepts. First is that he is the first president to be re-elected, the 1972 Marshall Law. He abolished the 1935 Philippine Constitution, and he made another constitution. Marcos is the first and last president of the Third Philippine Republic to win a second full term. His first four-year term had been successful, marked by industrialization, infrastructure, development, and increase in rice production. After his second term, he abolished the 1935 Philippine Constitution, placing the entire of the Philippines under martial law and extended his term indefinitely. According to the 1935 Philippine Constitution, the President of the Philippines can run only for two four-year terms. One of the reasons why he declared martial law is the 1971 Plaza Miranda bombing while having their meeting the advancing. Next in line is the 1986 NAP election. And now suddenly and unexpectedly, Marcos won and results to EDSA revolution. After being dared by an American journalist, President Marcos declared a snap election. He declared February 6 and 7 a holiday for people to vote between him and Corazon Aquino. The government announced Marcos as the snap election winner. However, people did not believe it, and Corazon Aquino led a people's victory rally at Luneta and called for civil disobedience. The EDSA revolution is a non-violent revolution led to departure of Ferdinand Marcos. He ended his 20-year dictatorship and restored the country's democracy. Next is the Senate and House Representatives election on May 1987. The first House of Representatives election since 1969. It is the first election since the People Power Revolution that overthrew Marcos. Last but not the least is the local elections that happened on January 1988. The new set of provincial and local city and municipal officials under the new constitution of the Philippines ratified in 1987. So that would be all. I hope you guys learned something from me. This is Sherry Jane Aldana signing off.